folks, welcome to TheyMightBeRacing.com. Today what we're looking at is the heater assembly out of my Jensen Healy, which is underneath the tarp here. Uh, one of the things you got to do before you start putting in things like the dashboard and start making sure you've got all your whistle pretties in there is taking care of the fundamental bits that sit under the dash that if the dash is actually in place they're nearly impossible to work on. And so while we've got the whole car apart, one of the things that I wanted to focus on next, just because it logically goes into the car next, is the heater system. Now you see what I've got in front of me here is the complete system. Uh, realistically, what you've got is that your supply on your heater box runs off of some hose off the back of the block. That supplies hot coolant into a radiator contained within the heater box. That radiator emits heat. Your fan, when operating, <coughs> goes ahead and pushes air through the unit over the radiator, which then in turn pushes through the tubing air into the interior car. Now, in looking at these units, there's a couple of things to look for. Uh, for starters, fan motors or your blower motor. Uh, it's possible the blower motor has been burned out. Uh, you'll see that the fan is currently out of this particular motor. I got started a little early cleaning this unit up and I still haven't gotten the plastic part of the fan out of the dishwasher, which is one of my secret tricks. A lot of your parts can be clean in the dishwasher when the wife isn't looking. Now, I tested this out, and it works just fine, so we know the blower motor's good. And I did take it apart. Um, I wouldn't normally recommend doing that. You can see why if you read the full article online. Um, in addition, these boxes are normally pretty rusty. The area underneath the dash is a, is a bit of a water trap. Um, you've got fluid running through the heater system, which at any point in time you can corrode out and cause water to leak. And so normally, where you see it, it's on the bottom of the unit. I got lucky with this one. This came in a bunch of spare parts, and it just so happens that this particular unit's in really good shape. Um, so far, uh, the only challenges I've had with it are really actually the parts that go to the rest of the car. Now these two vents are the demister vents and they go up into the dash and uh, if you've seen what a Jensen Healy dashboard looks like after say 30 years in the sun you'll understand what the, why these are in the condition they're in. Uh, in addition we have here the interior ventilation uh, assemblies and so they're what control the air blowing in and out of the car. Some of the old detail work that's still on here, these knobs were painted gold. I'm currently doing the research on this to find out if they're supposed to be painted gold or if this was somebody's bright idea to spruce the car up, because I've never seen it anywhere else. Um, what I thought was the most interesting out of all of this is this 30-year-old tubing. It's still nice and flexible. It's in great shape. Uh, you can order this, from what I understand, from Delta Motorsports if you're missing it. In fact, you can probably get most of the parts there. So, generally on the heating, the first thing to do is make sure your blower motor works. Uh, one of the tools that I keep handy at all points in time, and this is something I sort of patched together myself a number of years ago, is just a double set of alligator clips with a fuse on the positive lead that allows me to test out just about any electrical component that I need to test. I can put the fuse in there to make sure I don't accidentally burn out the unit based on amperage draw. Um, so we tested out the, the fan motor, works, works perfectly, the brushes are good. Uh, the next step will be to take all of this apart, clean it all up, make sure that there's no corrosion in there, make sure the radiator's good. There's a pair of um, spacing pieces, which if I remember correctly are styrofoam in here, which you're going to need to double check. Um, and one of the interesting things is they kind of more or less gooed the thing together using a tar-like material that I have yet to identify to ensure the box didn't leak. Uh, so one of the things that we're going to look into in this is the best way to seal your box up afterwards because uh, this stuff is kind of resinous and nasty and uh, makes a big mess when you're working with it. Uh, once you get the heater box apart, clean up all the parts, make sure nothing needs to be sandblasted, painted, or, or otherwise retreated. You can reassemble this making sure that you've got the radiator in the correct place, you feed this in through the firewall, and then it's simply a matter of also having the blower motor in place, and then finally, once you get your dash, hook up your tubing, hook up your vents, and then you should be pretty well good to go. Here we're looking at what's left of the guts of my heater core. 
Now, the heater core itself is fine. The easiest way to test these is you can get a small diameter rubber plug at your local Ace Hardware or wherever, plug up one end of your pipe, then use your air gun on your air compressor set at around 5 to 10 psi to put air pressure inside of the radiator. And if you submerge it in water, like in a, in a 10 gallon bucket, you see air bubbles coming out, you've got a leak. Uh, no air bubbles, no leak. Now, the other nice thing you can do while you've got these out is go ahead and flush it with a little CLR. Do, um, normally what I actually do is just drop it into the bucket with a little bit of CLR in it, let it set for a day or two, rinse it a couple of times. Uh, if it's particularly gamey or nasty, you put a little extra CLR in there to help break it away. Um, you also can see that the baffles on this particular radiator are pretty dinged up. Well, there's a reason for that. Um, there are two styrofoam inserts in the heater box, and these are put in there to support the unit. Now, what you can see is that these two particular pieces have literally melted and ripped up, trash destroyed over the years. Uh, this particular heater box, based on the appearance of these, uh, is has been worked on at one point in time. Somebody went through and replaced these. Uh, they are part from the parts catalog. I double checked with Delta Motorsports. These are a no longer available item. Um, in most cases, hopefully, you should be able to work with the ones you've got. If you don't, using the ones you have, you can cut yourself some new ones. And so what I did is I went down to the local craft store, and in there you can buy boxes of styrofoam. Uh, I've got a couple different ones. Now, the trick to working with this stuff, because it is very rigid, um, is a sharp coping saw. If you've got a jigsaw, some high speed, even better, if nothing else, if you heat a coping saw blade with a propane torch just a little bit, cut through your marks, and you'll be done with it pretty quickly. Um, this is really messy, so keep the shop back handy. Now, the other thing that we ran into is there are two baffle plates inside the heater box. And these are, at the movement of the cable, open and shut various different pieces of the heater. Now, on the interior face of this particular baffle and on both sides of this baffle, were uh, soft foam gaskets. They're pretty much used to shut down on a particular surface inside the main heater box assembly. For example, this piece right here in the heater box. Well, 30 years, uh, regardless of how uh, more recently these were probably swapped out, does its fair set of damage. So, Using some soft material that I was able to pick up at the fabric store, I went ahead and I recut gaskets for it, so I now have new fresh gaskets that I can drop in place. Now, this piece here, they're all straight cut, so it's relatively easy to do. This secondary piece is a wonderfully, beautifully odd shape that, of course, due to British engineering accuracy, is different from side to side. So this is going to be the trickier cut. I should hopefully be putting rough estimate um, sizes out on the, the website in the near future, but based on my experience, every box will be slightly different, so you may have to adjust. So, now that we've gone through, um, the other thing I ended up having to do is there was a bit more rust in the box than I anticipated. Underneath all of the, ga the soft gaskets, um, and in behind the styrofoam, water had gathered and settled in, so there was some rust in there. So we went ahead and we sandblasted the unit, so put a couple of coats of fresh paint on it, and the next stage is really reassembly. So first thing we're going to do is, A, I've got to finish cleaning up the heater core. Another thing you can do if you're of the, you know, extraordinarily anal retentive side of things is you can straighten the fins. Now, I haven't seen a radiator fin straightener tool in a long time. Um, however, a pair of needle nose pliers, um, and actually the really narrow gauge dog uh, shedding brushes are great for straightening soft fins like these. So what we'll do is we'll end up taking all the pieces that we've cut, adhere them to the various different places in the unit, start the reassembly, and after about a couple of hours, they should all be put back together again. Now